good morning guys <coughs> now let us understand what is the difference between accounting and auditing first we try to understand a basic outline what is accounting otherwise you can say what is bookkeeping then accounting then auditing what is bookkeeping bookkeeping is nothing but writing the general entries ledger posting you know ledger accounts so you have to give the posting last one is balancing beyond this we are not doing any bookkeeping you know just to take one voucher make entries in the books of accounts general entries first we write purchase of missionary what we write missionary account to debit to bank account entries we write then posting into ledger accounts in mission account as well as the bank account we give the posting and finally end of the day we balance it based around the requirement weekly fortnight monthly we balance it that is bookkeeping just recording the transactions then what is accounting where bookkeeping ends there accounting starts in accounts so what we are going to do here first we prepare the trial balance trial balance shows arithmetical accuracy of your posting trial balance tallied which means my arithmetical accuracy is correct maybe some errors may compounding errors may be there except one or two otherwise by and large trial balance tallied means my postings were correctly taken after the trial balance we prepare the financial statements in the financial statements what we prepare trading and profit and loss account then balance sheet then cash flow statements then notes to accounts so where bookkeeping ends their accounting starts already balances are there in the ledger accounts those balances we will extract and prepare the trial balance in the trial balance once a tally would say that yes arithmetical accuracy is there for posting then based around the trial balance i prepare my financial statements the financial statements in case of a trading concern trading account profit and loss account balance sheet this pnl account indicates what exactly your profit or loss during the period and the balance sheet state what is the financial position of the company during the financial year and then cash flow statements and then notes to accounts so where accounting ends their auditing starts so where bookkeeping ends accounts starts where accounting ends their auditing starts now what is the definition of auditing why repeated i will ask the definition means only to bring the logic here otherwise nothing as such it is a systematic and independent examination of the statement records information performance of any enterprise for a stated purpose in any auditing situation auditor has to pursues and recognizes prepositions before him collect the evidence evaluate the same form the judgment which is communicated through auditor's report so here where accounting ends means books of accounts are ready auditor is appointed and he will collect the data records information from the management because management is responsible for keeping the books of accounts selecting the appropriate suitable accounting system developing the internal control system keeping the records who is responsible management auditor is not responsible always remember an auditor cannot prepare accounts and do the audit parallelly which means i only draft accounts and i only do the audit can i defeat myself 
never be i will say that my books of accounts are always representing true and fair because i am only writing the books of accounts because i am preparing that and i am only doing the audit then i know where i did the irregularities and wisely i can plan my such a way that should not come into audit trial then definitely i can certify books of accounts are representing the true and fair that's why always fundamentally remember as an auditor i have to choose whether i would like to do auditing mean audit or keeping the records but not both if i do audit i will get a audit fees of 10 lakhs if i work as a senior accountant or accounts manager i get a salary of 24 lakhs now let me decide which role i have to play but not both the roles so already accounts are ready the this data is readily available within the entity collect the data that is audit where accounting ends their auditing begins have got the logic here then we will understand quickly what are the differences between accounting and auditing first i will go through under the accounting point of view then we will see under the auditing whenever you have a little doubt please ask me all of you comers only na any non comers here okay hello what is the meaning of auditing first point and it is the collection classification and the summarization of the data for the preparation of the books of accounts and to make a financial statements we take the records nothing but a vouchers are available first one is collection second classification capital expenditure revenue expenditure deferred revenue expenditure right other one summarization and finally preparation of the financial statements second it is the recording of the transactions at the time of occurrence accounting is nothing but as soon as transaction took place we have to make the needful entries in the books of accounts watching watching means transaction occurred or not we will get a information there so we made an entry in the books of accounts means yes primary entry it measures the business events in the monetary terms records them and communicates the financial results through the financial statements money measurement concept if you remember we record the entries which are measurable in terms of money monetary terms if it is not measurable in terms of money it has no space for the books of accounts we do want to make an entry whenever there is the income received payment made loss sustained profit is there that we make in the form of entries monetary terms only the financial statements indicates what is the profit or a loss during the particular financial period and what is the financial position of the entity the, the books of accounts will summarize as such so here monetary terms as well as record them and communicates nothing but what we have done during this period in the form of a financial statements financial statements means already we know trading account pnl account balance sheet cash flow statements and account notes to accounts these words we have to always speak cash flow statements not necessary in case of a uh, non trading concerns only accounts also different a receipts and payments account income and expenditure account they need to prepare fine it is a it is the primary responsibility of the management towards the shareholders or owners to maintain the financial records and in such a manner as that the financial statements is to be prepared uh, then from the records i think but who should maintain the records management in case of a company as we know there is a diverse between ownership and management ownership lies in the hands of shareholder they scattered throughout the country not available for day to day operations they have appointed the board of directors as said i told you board of directors are responsible for selecting suitable accounting system for our entity second maintenance of the internal control system third one is keeping the records auditor is not responsible for maintaining the books of accounts it is the primary responsibility of management management may be here board of directors 
and other one is an accountant is not expected to review report on the financial statements but the report to the compilation of the records to the management what does it mean see or the accountant you are a senior accountant junior accountant or accounts for manager whatever you are you are not expected to review the statements so what is your job as an accountant maintain the records just whenever transaction occurred write entries in the books of accounts those things submit to management you have no authority to review and evaluate whether the transaction is genuine or not you have no authority your job is transaction occurred vouchers are there make an entry if you are suspicious discuss with discuss with your concerned official but you have no authority you can't question them first of all after you are an employee na no? will you enjoy the any independence here whatever management said you have to do there thereby and you can't review the statements maximum what you can do compiling you can compile the data and give information to management beyond that you can't do anything for example what is the compiling we have the suggested answers are there previously we used to get a suggested answers from icai they used to give every examination one suggested answer available individual one booklet they will give after 2 years or 3 years they will give compiling nothing but all years of the law all years of auditing all years of accounts put together they will give one book you need not refer the four or five books under one area you can get all the four examination papers are available to you easy to review here also compilation work will be done by accountant but he can't review and make a comment on the financial statements and other one is an accountant works for the management of course whatever management said you have to do because they are appointed you management is appointing and according to their directions you have to discharge your duties and other one is no such liability there in accounting what does it mean if anything goes wrong in the books of accounts accountant is not liable to anyone except to management if any clerical mistakes he has done he is liable for it anything goes wrong because based on that accounts nobody is going to give a loan for you an accountant prepared the statement financial statements based on that will the financial institutions provide the loan to company no accountant certification is not valid there who has to give certification auditor then auditor is liable if auditor gave the wrong interpretation wrong report was given auditor is guilty he is liable to third party whereas accounts point of view there is no liability as such are you clear with all the points there guys any elaboration needed take it once continue right next auditing side verify auditing meaning an auditing is the analytical critical examination of the books of accounts financial records or the financial statements prepared thereon nothing but auditor has to collect the data information records performance from the management and he has to evaluate the same that's why this is a critical examination of the transactions by nature of investigative we can say and other one is it is the post mortem examination of the recorded transactions nothing but a 1st april to 31st march 1st april 2023 to 1st april mean 31st march 2024 during this period whatever the transactions occurred in the month of the may or june based on availability of the books i am doing the audit means i am i am reviewing the past data what is the post mortem a person died what is the reason for a death after the examination the medical practitioner able to give one certificate aka audit also same na after transaction occurred i am going to examine that data hope you are understanding this clear post mortem only and other one is auditing reviews the financial records to perform an opinion on the authenticity of the financial statements after reviewing the data he would say that there is no window dressing 
in the books of accounts. Genuinely entries were made. There is no fake information, false information, misleading information in the records. And the auditor is an independent person appointed by the business entity to review the financial statements to give the opinion thereon. Auditor is always appointed by shareholders of a company at a general meeting. Scope and objective of the audit is defined by management, of course, share appointing authority that is shareholder and he will do the audit, nothing but he is going to review the records. Accountant can't review the data, but auditor can review the data. At a random, he select a few transactions and from origin to conclusion, he can review the information. If it is the genuine data, he will accept it. If he found any kind of irregularity and he will report it to management, of course, shareholders. The auditor is required to submit a report with opinion on the true and fair assertion. Assertion means declaration. Always remember, assertions means declaration. In the financial statements, they made certain declaration. What were the declarations management made? Gross profit declared. Net profit declared. Provision for the income tax. They made a provision. Provision for the depreciation. Salaries paid. They made certain declarations. Whether those declarations were genuine or not going to be reviewed by this audit. And he has to certify that. Again, balance sheet consists of assets and liability. They are declared, which means assertion. Assertion means the declarations made. This is what a company possesses. These are assets of company. These are liabilities of company. They are giving the list on that. On that, we have to give a certification. Assertion means the declaration. You declared, I have passed my examination. It is assertion. Passed or not, if I want, I can review. How to review? Take your registration number and I can enter, I can get the data, I can access it, then I will know whether you have passed it or not. Here also, I collect information from you as an auditor, you are my client, I can review the data, wherever necessary, I can collect the evidence, gather the information, explanation from you. If I am satisfied, I will accept it, otherwise I will qualify the data, right? Qualify means conditional report I will give. And um, of course, you will submit a report to owners. Who are the owners? Shareholders in case of a company. And the auditor is an independent person, but is uh, accountable towards the owners and our shareholders, not to, to the management, of course. Audit appointing authority, remember simple word. Accountant is appointed by management, hence he is accountable to management. Auditor is appointed by shareholders. The owners of entity always keep in this word auditor's appointment always requires ordinary resolution. Auditor's appointment always requires ordinary resolution. Simple majority. Number of the votes in favor is more than the number of the votes against. Enough. Ordinary resolution. Special resolution, the referendum, no? three fourths of the people should agree. No, no, no. But whereas here only simple majority. Nothing but an ordinary resolution. Who is passing the resolution? Shareholder. That's why auditor's appointment always lies in the hands of owners of the entity. Then he is accountable to owners only. He will give, give a report to owners. And finally, in certain circumstances, auditor could be held liable. Auditor could be held liable for the third party. Example, based on auditor's report, auditor's statement, Auditor certification. A bank or financial institution has given the loan. Later, the financial institution or the bank came to know the certificate given by auditor was a fake certificate. Falsified certificate. Auditor is guilty. He is also prosecutable. Necessary action can be taken against him. Because based on every report we are giving, auditor's report is opinion. Auditor's certificate is facts and figures. And if I want to give loan as a bank, I will ask the auditor, give the certificate. 
I won't ask opinion there. I want a certificate of the profitability of entity. At least three years or five years projected profitability means estimated profitability, not our opinion, facts and figures. Based on that, I will sanction the loan. Then if you give wrong certification, bank will suffer tomorrow. Thereby, banker got every right against the entity. That's why auditor got a responsibility towards a third party. I am a creditor, I am a banker, I am a government, income tax department accepted the tax returns based on your certification. Later, IT department conducted the tax audit, review was done. They understood there was a, some kind of irregularities done by an auditor. Is the auditor is liable or not? Liable. How could you certify false certification and under section 44AB of Income Tax Act, where our tax audit is there. Keeping the records are income tax of 44AA. I hope you remember never income tax. And I hope these words are clear. Check ones, guys. Any point to elaborate there? Please ask me. So, already you know meaning of accounting, you know meaning of auditing. Just needed is just learning process and you have to learn it. The examination, this and the other one, the investigation is there. Repeatedly ask your questions and essay type questions. From the unit one, if you see the scanner, number of times question. Auditing and investigation, very frequently ask your question. Very, very frequency was very high. This is clear then? Any doubt, please ask me, otherwise I continue with the next. Of course, still some more points are left here. Check it once. We have done seven points. Okay, here, remaining points, please. Under accounting, two more points are there. Maintenance of accounts may not be mandatory for the small individuals, nothing but a sole trader, or a partnership forms under the 44AA of Income Tax Act, but could be mandatory under the company law. For individuals, keeping the records are not necessary unless you register. As long as unregistered form, you can keep records are not up to you. Once registered, then you have to go for the keeping the records. And according to the last point here, uh, accounting is done as per the principles of the Indian accounting standards. Which means, while keeping the books of accounts, wherever applicable, you have to follow accounting standards. Best example, valuation of inventory, AS2, you have to follow. If not, what is the reason for the departure has to be identified. It should be reflected in auditor's report. Now come to the auditing side. Audit could be exempted from the various individuals or small business concerns. For individuals, I told you guys, 45 lakhs cent. If your gross total income is not exceeding 45 lakhs, as a CMA, as a CA, as a company secretary, as a lawyer, as an engineer, as a doctor, professional, individual case, if their total income, gross total income is not exceeding 45 lakhs, audit is not necessary. Below 45 lakhs, just a self-assessment can be made. Above 45 lakhs, audit is must. In case of a business concerns, 1 crore or more, audit is must. Less than 1 crore, audit is not necessary. Self-assessment can be made. Am I clear? So, audit is not compulsory in case of a small and business concerns in K partnership. If the monetary threshold is not increasing or exceeding, until that there is no audit. And uh, under section 44AB of Income Tax 1961, even in case the maintaining the books of account is a statutory requirement, of course, you have to keep the records. Whether the tax liability is there or not, keep the records under 44AA. Audit is necessary only when the monetary threshold is exceeding, otherwise not necessary. But the monetary under the laws, of course, companies act is, is different. In case of a small individual, so partnership, monetary threshold less than that, no audit, more than that, audit is there. 
in case of a company irrespective of your income audit is mandatory a company registered under the companies act compulsory audit right and uh, finally audit is done as per the principles set in standards on auditing this is called sca this is called as standards on auditing auditing point of view, some standards were defined by icai we are following the same chalo this is about differences between accounting and auditing now guys <clears throat> so this point to remember 44a what is the 44a just keeping the records just keeping the records whether tax liability attracts or not secondary you have to maintain the records under section 44 aa what is 44 ab audit is a compulsory if the monetary threshold is exceeding the limit prescribed by law in case of a individual and partnership form whereas in case of a company irrespective of the their total income and expenses they have to go for audit there's only one clue remember individual case 45 lakhs and more 45 lakhs and more income whereas a business point small business point of your partnership one crore and more audit is must otherwise it is not yeah turnover please one crore turnover not profit now guys this is the very very important question and repeatedly asked in our examination please perfectly learn this point what is the difference between auditing and investigation let me discuss certain things about here first what is investigation in our organization morale of employees has come down what is the reason despite we give the best incentive best work environment there is a low morale of employees why i would like to know investigate fraud was the detected investigate since how long this is happening when it was started now it was detected but when the origin i wanted to know who is involved here amount of the fraud nature of the fraud persons involved i would like to know investigate otherwise in a particular zone central zone north zone east zone west zone some zone our sales were suddenly reduced steep fall of the sale what could be the reasons there may be a fall sliding will be there fall is always like this not like this if the fall is like this means like a water you take in a glass you, you pour like this it goes straight this is very dangerous this is very dangerous if there is any fall it go like this if fall is like this somewhere seriously wrong i wanted to know as a management investigate absenteeism of employees increasing i wanted to know investigate otherwise labor turnover is increasing despite we give the best salary best environment but still labor turnover is increasing day by day means employees are very frequently resigning and leaving organization what could be the reason they were not telling the reasons why leaving organization because they don't want to stain the relations with the employer probably then i want to go for investigation that's why remember investigation is always for specific purpose investigation is only for a specific purpose best example is fraud and best example is always fraud what is the reason or how long this is happening in this entity and who will appoint investigator management remember investigators are appointed by management means board of director and who can be investigator any person any person even non ca means the investigator need not be chartered accountant any person can be appointed as a investigator 
and the scope of investigation is defined by management and the report is submitted to management investigation completed what all his findings he will submit a report to management investigators report is always private document it is not a public document it is for management to know what's going on here to take a corrective course of action that's it it is not a public document auditor's report is a public document it is a public domain available but auditor's and investigator's report is not a public document so few words a few lines always keep in mind and investigation why investigation recently two trains were clashed investigation what for what is the reason for this if i know in future at least we can take the corrective actions here also in the organization also why investigation for a specific purpose investigation we are conducting in order to know what is the fraud amount involved who are involved nature of the fraud i wanted to know management appointed the investigator investigators are appointed by management investigator need not be qualified chartered accountant of course even ca also can be appointed as a investigator no exception as such any person can be appointed my contention is he need not be qualified ca that's all means even ca also can be appointed once appointed the scope of the investigation defined by management i appointed you as my investigator i said fraud is there investigate now on words whenever you are investigating you investigate issues with the suspicious mind each and every transaction you look at very suspicious manner yes there may be irregularity is there fraud is there everything nothing but a, with the pre determined mind set that i am going to detect the fraud because you are appointed essentially to detect a fraud na each and every transaction you suspect then only you are able to detect the irregularities there with a suspicious mind you start your work so investigators are appointed by management investigator need not to be qualified ca and scope is defined by management investigators start a work with a suspicious mindset i am going to detect something next one investigator submit a report to management investigator's report is not a public document it's a purely private document management wanted to know how much amount involved in case of a fraud parties involved since how long this is happening that's why investigation is not confined to one period audit is confined to one period one period means first april to 31st march these accounts only i can access i can do audit remaining all i may access i can't do audit i can do audit of only 12 months transactions only restricted but investigation was not like that my investigation may go for started now i can go for one year back two years three years five years down to horizon i am going there is no limit the reason is that for 15 years before this is happening for 15 years i have to travel that's why fraud will be done very very orderly manner and systematically people will do so this is about investigation right for investigation there is no specific format how to give a report and how to submit a report there is no specific format whereas in case of a audit point of view there is a format and what is the auditor's format audit report format only outline i am sharing first one is the title title second one address c third one introduction paragraph fourth one scope paragraph fifth one opinion paragraph sixth one place date signature and stamp this order you have to follow 
there is one format title you have to write the title clearly second one addressee to whom you are giving this report to shareholders next one scope paragraph opinion paragraph then place date signature and stamp one format you have to follow whereas in case of investigators report point of view is there any format as such like this no to whom so your it is concerned and he will draft the report otherwise the directors are appointed to the directors what all my findings are there i write one by one and submit a report there is no format as such am i clear now let us understand how auditing is different from investigation first i will read under the auditing then we see under the investigation what is audit meaning auditing is a independent and a systematic examination of evidence underlying the accounting or other data in accordance with generally accepted accounting practices auditing auditing practices to ascertain true and fair view of the financial statements of enterprise audit has a wide scope the statutory auditor scope is determined by the relevant law like a company what is the scope of the company audit company is act 2013 in case of a bank what is the scope of the bank audit according to banking regulation act 1949 if your is insurance company as per the insurance act 1938 they have stated what is the scope of audit in case of a statutory in case of a non statutory the scope is defined by management nothing but a private audit non statutory means private audits in that case only by management and uh, here they are determined by relevant law and in case of a private audit management will decide the scope of audit other one is in audit accounts and records are verified to know the truth and fairness of the entity this is the word always repeating i hope you remember what is the true and fair view just i remind you what are the true and fair view concept here no asset is neither overvalued nor undervalued all material changes in the accounts are properly recorded there is no unrecorded asset in the books of accounts all the liabilities are neither overvalued nor undervalued balance sheet is prepared according to part b of the I mean part a of the schedule 3 pnl account is prepared according to part b of the I mean schedule 3 of the companies act 2013 financial reporting framework then accounting policies there is a consistency and finally all unusual exceptional non recurring items were shown separately you have certified that books of accounts are representing true and fair which means all these seven areas auditor has already examined that's the meaning auditor signed means true and fair you is there which means all the seven criteria i have verified am i clear okay the audit is conducted in accordance with the generally accepted auditing principles auditing standards are there and audit uh, will evaluate accounting standards and uh, predominantly based on the pervasive evidence pervasive means incidental and auditor is a spectacle not a suspicious auditor will never start uh, his work with a suspicious mind na no? i am going to detect some fraud in this organization no what is the primary objective of auditor to certify that books of accounts are representing true and fair view financial statement then i don't have any suspicious before i start while doing audit if i come across any irregularity i report that's why he is only spectacle but not a suspicious he never start his work with a suspicious mind he will expect that management is having highest integrity 
and things are going to happen in a orderly manner he never suspected while doing audit to come across any irregular like errors and frauds are there he will report that's why secondary objective not a primary objective and uh, auditor auditing is a routine exercise normally conducted annually audit will happen every year once in a year see all the seven points any point to elaborate there ask me guys are you clear with the meaning you have to learn the sentences please and we have to repeat and try to the extent possible reproduce in the examination while writing examination don't forget we want only marks we are not there anything whether just like a 10th class student how would he learn the subject just to will butify certain things sometimes here also we have to do certain things examiner expectations are different he expect that he will reproduce because whenever we correct evaluate papers exam ica will send answers also they will give answers to examiners if they write this answer give this many marks so always he will try to compare like this sometime the examiners may be non academic professionals always academicians only want to correct papers na he is one hand practicing other hand is examiner for papers also as you then why he believes only the statement given by ica he will take that notes and he will try to compare always some student that's why they get very less marks and non academicians are there in correcting the papers academicians want to do all this process sometime at least to uh, 40 to 50 percent non academicians are there their problem will come because examiner is academician like me as you i know what exactly relevant i can understand that he won't see he will see only answer given by icai you try to compare both always if that answer is there you mark other will stuck off that's why you have to be careful that's what i am trying to say that's it okay na? now guys what is investigation check it investigation may be defined as yeah an examination of accounts and records with a view to ascertain the fact for some special purposes which varies from one assignment to another assignment for a special purpose audit investigation conducted fraud is there investigate labor turnover is increasing investigation purpose is different you no know? one assignment to another assignment investigation role is different first case of fraud i said and the second case i said i go with the only labor turnover third time i may say morale of employee fourth one i say why sales has come down so and so area go and conduct one survey take the feedback from the customers and come back maybe purpose is different and the scope of investigation on the other hand limited uh, for the period and areas are covered of course management will define uh, what exactly they have to do and investigation for a special purpose investigation on behalf of the yeah, of course example he gave there on behalf of incoming partner when incoming partner is coming investigate whether he is going to be right person or not generally before we fix the marriage also we will go for investigation officially or unofficially people will contact try to bring gather some information about that person whether is going to be right person or not isn't it some level of investigation will be done reliance placing is a different personal investigating getting some data is a different that by and investigation involves the extended auditing procedure already audit is done in that audit only fraud was detected and we are extending further investigate the same in this case okay and investigator can draw the his conclusions only on the basis of the substantial sometimes conclusive evidence substantial evidence means concrete evidence available sometime on the other hand any conclusive evidence is available any drawn very information given by management also may be considered whereas an investigator starts with the suspicious and collects the evidence either 
confirm or dispel that is suspicious. He was suspecting, he collected evidence either to confirm the suspicious or to say he is not guilty. Whether guilty or not, I wanted to know further information collected, evidences were analyzed and finally drawn one conclusion there. And finally, investigation may spread over a longer period than one year. Of course, you are not confined to one period. Investigation may be for previous year, one, two, three, four. It will go on until you reach your origin of this investigation purpose. Now, see once, guys. So, in simple terms, remember, investigation is for a special purpose. Investigators are appointed by management. Investigator need not be a qualified person and investigation scope defined by management. Report is submitted to management. It is not a public document and he will confine to the object or scope defined by management. And finally, he, he will start his work with a suspicious mindset to know whether this irregularity exists, doesn't exist. Right? See once, any point of clarity guys, ask me. So far in this chapter, what are the things I said, true and fair view? Second one, hmm? objectives, primary objective, secondary objective, third one, inherent limitations of auditing, fourth one, auditing and accounting, fifth one, auditing and investigation. You take any previous question papers of ICAI or the CA, wherever auditing paper is there, out of these five, at least you can see one question. So please learn this. Continue further. So, scope and auditing this part already we have done in the yesterday previous class. Already these advantages, disadvantages we have completed. Now, Classification of auditing. You check all the headings from the beginning up to classification, whether all headings are covered or not, verify. Any clarity? Any doubt? Okay. Now guys, types of audit. Types of audit also very important chapter again. From this again one question you can expect. If you see the previous question papers, our experience speaks that continuous audit, balance sheet audit, periodic audit otherwise. Then we have environmental audit, Internal audit, interior audit, examples are there where sometimes questions were repetition by nature. Here, more questions, some more types of audits are there. Each and every one we try to understand. First one is based on organizational structure, statutory audit. In case of a statutory audit, listen, guys. The term itself is self-explanatory, statutory, which means mandatory. According to law, audit is a compulsory. Here, what is the general outline we can say? In case of a statutory audit, where it is necessary, a company, as per the Companies Act 2013, once a company registered, audit is compulsory. Ever sees a bank as per the Banking Regulation Act, audit is compulsory. Ever sees the insurance company, audit is compulsory. Ever sees a electricity generation supply company, in simple electricity company, under the Electricity Act, audit is compulsory. In case of a cooperative society, as per the Cooperative Societies Act 1912, Audit is compulsory. Statutory means according to law, audit is mandatory. 
in case of a statutory audit what are the requirements auditors are appointed by owners or the shareholders of a company auditor must be competent and qualified person auditor must be competent and qualified with cop certificate of practice scope of the audit is defined by law statutory means law company is there what is the scope of company audit company law already defined auditor has to do it so scope is defined by law then auditor submit a report to owners or shareholders of company appointing authority and the report has to be submitted according to the format given there is a prescribed format title address introduction paragraph opinion paragraph means scope paragraph opinion paragraph place date sign and stamping these words remember just i am giving the side headings for you wherever situation will come we will discuss again what are the heads here title second address third introduction paragraph fourth one op scope paragraph fifth one opinion paragraph and finally place the date and signature later part format will come that time these headings will be familiarity is there easy to go through that concept fine report has to be drafted presented to management statutory audit is essentially auditors are appointed by whom the owners of a company this is a shareholders meeting auditor should be appointed but there is a difference of opinion among the members for regarding appointment of auditor they are unable to decide whom should we appoint because audit committee is not there under section 177 then shareholders unanimously pass through one resolution unanimous resolution authorizing board of directors for appointment of auditor now question is can the board can the shareholders of a company authorize the board of director for appointment of auditor yes or no since we are time is running short because meeting started around 4 o'clock already 9 pm all are feeling hungry they have to take a dinner and go off some items were unable to complete timely and the meeting can't be extended for the next day arrangements were not made the time so unanimously shareholders passed through a resolution that hereby we authorize the board of directors for appointment of auditor now the question is can the shareholders of a company authorize board of directors for appointment of auditor yes or no quickly say something yes 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 anything yes or no no issue no reason no reason yes i don't want reason committee is not there for committee requirement mandatory threshold is there there is one monetary threshold paid up capital turnover borrowings towards the company if those criteria was there then only committee necessary otherwise committee not necessary that's why correct only ordinary resolution only we are asking since we are shareholders unable to appoint an auditor we are authorizing the board of directors on our behalf you can appoint a auditor can the shareholders do so you said yes you she said no go with the reason that's all no reason bolo only shareholder can appoint others cannot appoint why asking why 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 we are they, they are owners baba they only authorizing na they only authorizing you do on our behalf owner only authorizing nothing wrong in that that's what i am saying what do you say conclude quickly yes 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 sir 
Clear silence is not acceptance. I think all of you know. Uh, Indian Contract Act acceptance chapter, na? Silence is not acceptance. We have to say something. Yeah? Yes, sir? Still, you see, stick to your answer? No. Okay, only one person said no, others are saying yes. Answer is no. Excellent. Who should appoint a auditor? Shareholder. You appoint. Sir, we are unable to appoint. In case if you are unable to appoint, you can ask the central government to appoint auditor. Why board of director? Board of directors will appoint their own known person as an auditor. He may help the board of director. Isn't it? If you ask me, I am a director of a company. If you ask me, you appoint auditor means I will bring a person who can support me because I did a fraud. Isn't it? Thereby, in case, always remember this word, even the whole body of the shareholders of a company cannot delegate their authority to board of directors. Auditor's appointment by shareholder. In case if you are unable to appoint an auditor, you pray the central government, government will appoint auditor. But shareholders cannot authorize board of directors or shareholders cannot delegate their power to board of director for appointment of auditor because the chance of pollution between auditor and board of director. Chance is there. Am I clear? In case of a government company, who will appoint auditor C and A G? Comptroller and Auditor General. In case of a government company, auditors are appointed by C and A G. Scope is defined by C and A G. Report is given to C and A G. The C and A G submit a report to central government. Central government will place the report before Parliament. This is the hierarchy. In case of a government company, what is the government company according to section 2, subsection 45? With more than 51% of the paid up capital, share capital. Paid up share capital, share paid up capital. Paid up capital. Okay. Voting power, okay. Paid up capital of a company is held by whom? Central government or state government, partly central government and partly state government. So, government company. In case of government company, auditors are appointed by C and A G, constitutional authority. Remember, constitutional authority, C and A G, comptroller and auditor general. Auditor's appointment lies in the hands of C and A G. Scope of audit is defined by C and A G. And uh, his remuneration payable to auditor decided by C and A G. And payable by company. Company will pay. Fine. And report is given to C and A G. The C and A G submit a report to central government. The central government will place it before parliament. Public money, na? It is accountable. It will go like this, the hierarchy. Okay? Chalo. So, this is about the statutory audit. Mandatory audit and it must and should you have to appoint the audit. So, auditors are appointed by, this is also called compulsory audit. Auditors are appointed by owners or shareholders of the entity. And the scope of audit is defined by statutory. Law only said what to do. And um, report is given to shareholders. It is a public document. In case of a government company, C and A G, report is given to C and A G. C and A G forward to central government. Central government place before parliament. Am I clear? Now let us see what is statutory audit. In case of a statutory audit, statutory audit is a Checking of accounts required by law, a statutory or a law, 
may require having a annual audit of the financial records of the company or any other entity the law may require the audit to be conducted in a specified manner the manner of reporting contents of the report and authority to which the report of auditor should be presented are all specified in the statute manner of reporting contents of the report authority to which the report should have been presented and specified by the statute what is the first one here manner of reporting how to report this one audit is done first of all auditor's report one draft copy is ready that a copy placed before audit committee if committee is there committee is not the board of director sir i have done the audit this is the report i propose to give they all will go through it if they wanted to give any clarifications on that then and there they can give if auditor satisfied he may change opinion also that's the first step once they agree then he will draft the report contents of the report what are the contents title address e introduction paragraph scope paragraph opinion paragraph place date signature stamping with the membership of course and other one is authority to whom this report has to be submitted auditors are appointed by shareholder submit to shareholder directly i can't give it to shareholder then who is authority company secretary company secretary will forward one copy one copy to board of director they will place to shareholder i can't give it directly to shareholders na to whom i should submit committee is there for committee i will submit audit committee committee is not there board of directors i will give otherwise for company secretary compliance officer for him i will submit a report right and uh, statutory audits are mandatory in the nature statutory auditor is generally the principal auditor of the organization in case of a companies under the companies act 2013 governors governs the audit of accounts reporting and the manner of preparing auditors report according to company law in case of a government company audit of a government body the scope and the audit program as per the comptroller and auditor general cog tndg or cog uh, companies act 2013 both cog as well as companies act in case of a insurance company nationalized banks in case of insurance company irda what is irda insurance development regulatory authority of india and other one is rbi means wow rbi in case of a bank and they will give the directions how to do audit and all in case of a cooperative society as per the cooperative societies act 1932 statutory auditor of a company is appointed by board of director or the shareholders at a general meeting or shareholders cannot delegate their power to directors by passing one special resolution even the unanimous resolution special resolution also special resolution requires three fourth majority of shareholders attended at meeting unanimous means all agreed but still you can't delegate your authority based on this true or false may come application based question also can be generated so do remember this line a statutory auditor can be appointed by the central government if the shareholders fails to appoint the auditor statutory audit should be performed by a qualified ca holding the cop and not by any other person in case of a statutory audit audit is always by qualified competent official an incompetent person a senior accountant other than the ca cannot do any audit work in case of a company clear now guys what are advantages here 
regarding advantages straight away i am discussing the points that paragraph is not necessary there see the points one by one from the paper by the shareholders for their economic decision for exercising their voting rights economic decision means i want to make investment in your company i want to withdraw my investment in your company in both the cases this audit report will be helpful for us and other one is timely tax assessment the tax submission timely tax assessment nothing but a q1 q2 q3 our reports are already done audit is done last 3 months audit how much time it will take quickly tax returns can be filed with or i mean income tax authority for determining the purchase or sale consideration in case of a ongoing concern nothing but if you want to buy or sell anything estimation can be made immediately valuation can be done that's why and the settlement of the partners in case of a admission of a partner retirement of a partner death of a partner you want to do the settlement for them already audit is done books are ready immediately payment can be made short span will be there q1 q2 q3 report already done january uh, 16th one person died 16 days business how much time required to do audit quickly his account can be settled and um, before the court in case of a settlement of the disputes between the employees the creditors and debtors if you want any explanation ask me i don't think self reading this were all very simple lines if you want any point clarification please raise your hand determining the actual value of the business or the shares in case of a merger and acquisition as a buyer i always quote a less price as a seller always i quote a more price valuation part is concerned what is the fair value means we have to conduct an audit then we are able to understand genuinely what exactly it is the swap ratio we have to allow recently hdfc bank and hdfc both are merged no? are you following the newspapers interest don't know this seriously don't know are hdfc bank is today number 1 bank in country having the 17 crores customers second next best profit making company after the reliance reliance is the number 1 profit making what is their profit in lakhs and lakhs of crores whereas what is the profit of hdfc bank 60135 crores and recently i was reading 60000 second best bank in the not bank organization in india It's profit making company second state bank and the profit is 50000 crores hsb hdfc bank profit is 60000 crores on public sector profit 50000 in other way convey despite in public sector their profits were 50000 you know the way you can project is different private sector means interference won't be there you can take your decision anyway public sector yeah government interference will be there timely permissions won't get but still they are making a profit means yes other side you can comment otherwise you can say despite having the such a support from the government huge financial assistance you are unable to compete the public sector private sector argument na you can if you want you can make wise arguments and both the sides you can argue only thing is how best you can present it anyway example yes are you read economic times baba you are all going to be tomorrow's professionals so you have to read don't go always after the social media are webs uh, will you follow what it is in the asia <laughs> but my humble request for all of you until the december examination please set aside this mobile rest of your life you can access it if you want serious <laughs> sometime we can't resist here i had seen this that's why i'm saying once i started watching one episode of any serial it consists of 18 or 13 or 16 something as such we can't stop it you know 
anyone watched eight eight episodes continuously we are friends ah uh, eight episodes with that imagine how much time i am killing there isn't it you have to understand don't sleep during the night <laughs> sorry i am deviating <clears throat> Uh, for getting the financial assistance from the financial institutions, banks and investors to get a financial assistance. If you want any loans and advances from the banks or financial institution, definitely you need an auditor's report. So, statutory audit. In case of a non-profit organizations, getting of a government grant to availing the tax exemptions, audit is necessary. And uh, evaluation of the internal control system strengthening it by removing the inherent weaknesses and checking the efficiency of internal check whether the internal control system is effective or ineffective auditor will tell what are the areas where we are weak what steps should be taken with a view to strengthen that he will give the remedial measures also what is internal check i told you guys one person work is subject to be reviewed by another person internal check one person work is subject to review by another person then i won't dare to do certain irregularity if i did any fraud or error immediately going to detect then it works as a moral check on employees they work on the toes they have to be very very careful one time two times okay but repeatedly errors are detecting means people look at that person cheaply isn't it you you lost your credibility there thereby people work more effectively and efficiently for checking the integrity of the management what is integrity honesty straight forwardness if the top level executives are having highest integrity then definitely organization would be something different and checking the integrity of the management which manages the funds and affairs on behalf of the real owners and shareholders you have to run the business for the sake of the owners not for your personal ends as a managing director as a executive director as a non executive director don't see your personal advantages here just to see the owner's interest for other for other users the financial statements like a creditors investors the government agencies it ensures that any assertions in the financial statements neither overstated nor understated nor misrepresented i think but the information is uh, true and fair and for the proper distribution of the profits by way of the payment of the wages and other benefits we have the profit how the profits are distributed some amount as a dividend some amount as a bonus towards an employee some amount towards the again uh, information nothing but a uh, internal organization you can go for the renovation part is concerned or extraction of the new technology towards the organization whatever and uh, to ensure the proper distribution of the profits as a dividend ensure that all the legal requirements are fulfilled statutory compliances were adhered if there is any departure from the law the auditor will report and annual returns were not filed tax returns were not filed meeting was not conducted timely company law will impose some penalty it will be reported there and the caution will come you have to be careful and cautious and for settlement of insurance claims and other recovery of the government bodies etc these are advantages i don't see this question may come may not come advantages who will ask and maybe at a graduation level important don't think at a professional examination level this question will come maybe uh, we can be doubt now always expect the unexpected tomorrow question come don't to curse me and they may ask all the points you need not write you these points you need not but if i just to learn it if you know the concept you can write your own words without changing the meaning that vocabulary we have to take some vocabulary you have to use 
write our own way. This is about statutory audit. Clear? Now, guys, non-statutory audit. What is the non-statutory audit? Non-statutory audit also called as private audit. Non-statutory audit also called private audit. Let me explain here. This audit is not compulsory. Right? Private audit is not mandatory. When audit is not compulsory usually, in case of a individuals, in case of a small business or a partnership, if the monetary threshold is not exceeding. But those people also, though audit is not compulsory, we want to go for audit. Ours is a partnership business. Turnover is less than 1 crore. You are active partner. You want to prove your integrity. You want to say that there are no window dressing and the partnership funds were not used for my personal purpose. I want to prove my integrity. Then what should I do? Conduct audit. So, non-statutory audit is called private audit. Now, what are the requirements of private audit? Listen carefully, guys. Private audit is not compulsory. Auditors are appointed by private party. Auditor is appointed by private party. Auditor need not be qualified, competent person. Auditor need not be qualified, competent person. Which means any person can be appointed as a auditor. It's up to you, no? for your sake you are conducting, not for the general public purpose. He need not be qualified person, means he need not be a CA. Even the senior accountant is that he can get a rich experience in that uh, he can do that audit process. And the scope of audit is defined by private party. And the report is submitted to private party. And this never be the public document. Private audit report is not a public document. Only for internal purpose you can use it. Only for internal purpose. This is called private audit. So in simple four or five lines. And this is not compulsory. Purely voluntary. Auditors are appointed by private party. Scope is defined by private party. Report is given to private party. A private audit auditor need not be a qualified person, may be qualified person also, right? And the report is given to private party. It is not a public document. Why this is conducted? To prove your integrity. Beyond that, nothing is. Now, let us see, guys. <coughs> non statutory audit. This audit is conducted without legal requirement. Means legally this is not compulsory, purely optional. This is called non-statutory audit or private audit. This kind of audit is arranged purely voluntarily, sometime as per the internal rules of organization. Here, auditor is appointed by agreement with the, which determines the nature and scope of the audit to be conducted the rights and duties of the auditor and the reporting requirements in case of a sole proprietary concern partnership form non-profit organizations like a club association of the person hospital etc get their accounts audited to make them reliable and acceptable by the shareholders and uh, there are some advantages out of this non-statutory audit introduction is clear so my points easy to remember those clues and always and what are advantages in case of a private audit to the sole trader if you ever see the sole trader if i conduct a private audit what benefits i have for you benefits were to evaluate internal control system strengthen it by removing the weaknesses if any a sole trader, a super bazaar also can be conducted by sole trader only. Then what are some internal controls are there? If I conduct an audit, 
then uh, my auditor able to tell me sir these are internal controls who are following these are very strong these are weaknesses there how to overcome the weaknesses he will give the corrective measures also it will strengthen the internal control system second it increases the reliability and authenticity of the financial statement every three months you are conducting audit someone visited your branch and the sole trader said hey are you going do conducting any audit yes every three months audit is going on this is the report if anybody heard that it increases your credibility yes he is very systematically orderly behaving in the organization and it helps the timely finalization of the annual financial statements for a tax assessment because one year audit i need not to do na q1 q2 q3 audits are done q4 three months business timely i can conduct my audit tax returns can be submitted for the persons if it is needed under section 44 ab otherwise at least refine nil returns can be filed without any tax liability also to keep the moral check on the working of employees of course audit is there means the people are little diligent while doing their work they will be careful and cautious because the auditor will easily detect their irregularities it helps them obtaining the funds easily from the financial institutions based on the more reliable financial statements available to the bank and financial institute sole trader also want any loan you go and submit a tax returns they will appreciate and based on that data available they may sanction the loans term loans overdraft etc for you it helps the settling of settling of the trade disputes labor disputes and insurance claims advantages to sole trader and what are advantages to the partnership form and others partnership form already we know section 4 of the indian partnership act 1932 added advantages of besides means above points plus these points above all advantages are there for a partnership also apart from that the following advantages we have to include what are those it helps for the settlement of accounts among the partners on the basis of the more reliable accounting records profit is announced without audit if we declare the profit everybody look at active partner suspiciously if the audit is done and profit is announced and there is the integrity of the active partner that people will believe that data then trustworthiness will be there on the active partner also and um, the it projects the interest of the minor sleeping partner or partners who are not involved in the day to day operations and keep check on the person who are working on behalf of others are there any minor partner within the entity yes do we have the dormant partners dormant means sleeping partners within the entity on their behalf who is actively involving in the day to day affairs you can have one assessment it helps the partnership form for settlement of the goodwill at the time of admission retirement death of a partner settlement of accounts and it enables the firm to get a loans from the banks and financial institutions and rely upon audited accounts of the firm clear due to the these advantages even the entities which are not under the statutory obligation of a statutory audit they grant they get their accounts voluntarily audited uh, to get uh, those benefits which are available there now what is the difference between statutory audit the non statutory audit this is expected or unexpected question very rarely question will see this uh, parallelly i am reading both the points because we know both the points meaning so that we try to complete statutory audit mandatory it is non mandatory voluntary and the relevant statute law determines the scope of audit in case of a statutory audit mine is a company what the scope of audit who will define company law whereas in case of a non statutory 
the employer or partners determine the scope of the audit and in case of a statutory audit academic or the professional qualification is prescribed for the auditor qualified person with the cop here auditor need not possess any academic or professional qualification which means any person can be appointed as a statutory auditor need not be a qualified ca the statute dictates the powers and rights of the auditor rights to powers to duties of auditor company law 143 is there we have to follow and whereas in case of a non statutory there are agreement will define what are the rights duties of the partners because mutual understanding between auditor and client auditor has independence in case of a statutory audit and mental attitude nothing but a statute and mental which means auditor's work is not influenced by anyone in case of a company he got more independence whereas in case of non statutory you are appointing me i have to give the report according to your will and wish otherwise renewal won't be there auditor does not require does not enjoy such independence in case of a non statutory sometime you will say also i am appointing you as an auditor uh, i want report like this and i have to give the report like that only i don't have any freedom to give my own report there despite whatever may be the facts auditor is liable for the negligence under the common law and for the misfeasance misfeasance means duties were not followed effectively efficiently misfeasance duties the negligence on the duty is there that's called misfeasance and relevant statute governing the audit auditor is going to be guilty that's why remember and audit plan audit program audit working paper audit notebook these four are powerful weapons of auditor somebody made a complaint against an auditor that you are negligent you are complicit you fail to discharge your duty with utmost diligence immediately auditor will show only one thing see this audit plan this is a plan this is a program these are working paper these are the audit notebook tell me where i was negligent so auditor can easily escape any kind of a punishment under the respective law because of those four documents we see in the later part it will come auditor liable for the negligence only to the common law he is liable to only management but not to anyone outside the world and the auditor's report is published for the general public and the non statutory known to only employers and own private document no? private audit private document not for the general purpose it is not available to the whole society as a well. right quickly give one reading if you want any point there you can ask me guys
can i go ahead yeah see the next one there that is the internal audit and just i will introduce the concept here because we have separate chapter later one chapter is there internal control internal audit internal check one chapter is there that time monetary threshold and all we'll discuss later here i am only just giving an outline over the what is internal audit okay not in detailed study fine later part we see what are the advantages or disadvantages who can be internal auditor how to appoint to liability whether the internal audit report is reliable or not reliable we'll everything we'll discuss the detail here only just outline okay in the previous class we were discussing about internal control system then internal audit then internal check these three are integral parts and first internal control system what are internal control system the rules and regulations which are framed in order to accomplish organizational objectives whether these rules and regulations are effective or ineffective how do we know as a management we have developed the internal control system whether this is working effectively or not is this require any kind of a corrections or not for that i go for internal audit internal audit is not mandatory for all the companies there is one monetary threshold if that monetary threshold is satisfied internal audit is necessary otherwise it is not necessary so internal audit is not compulsory for all the companies internal auditors are appointed by management listen carefully internal auditors are appointed by management internal auditor need not be a qualified ca any person even accountant can be appointed as a internal auditor internal auditor is a employee of the company an internal auditor will enjoy less independence when compared to external auditor he is coming from outside is internal within the company working as a employee as an employee will you enjoy the absolute independence and absolutely no because you are internal employee work appointed as the internal auditor your salary your increment your promotion your advancement your growth lies in the hands of top level executives if they have decided you become something immediately within the entity isn't it if those people did certain irregularity as an internal auditor you have detected will you report it no i don't think so you won't report because they will influence him they will say only one thing sir uh, certain amount was detected how much almost 100 crores sir. okay now what is our role sir i am internal auditor sir what is the salary per month 2 lakhs sir next month onwards 5 lakhs so rest he will manage as i told in the previous class an auditor is a doctor for the financial health of the organization he knows how to detect the irregularity he knows how to correct it also yes doctor knows how to diagnose the issue he knows how to cure it also no similarly auditor also knows everything and and he will manipulate that's why he will always enjoy less independence in case of internal audit no freedom and because my life dependent on their wish and will how can i go against them that's why i won't enjoy much independence internal auditor submit a report to whom management it is this a public document no it is a private document internal audit that's why remember internal audit essentially conducted what's the purpose 
to know whether internal controls were effective or ineffective. Whether internal controls are able to safeguard the assets of the business or not. What are the weaknesses involved? I want to know what are the irregularities or weaknesses in internal control system. If I know, I can plug it. He is the one going to certify. These weaknesses he is reporting to management. Will anybody report this report to society? And That's for internal auditor purely for internal purpose. So time being you remember 5-6 lines. And an internal audit is not compulsory. Internal auditor is ordered by the management. Auditor is appointed by management. Scope is defined by management. Internal auditor need not be qualified professional with the COP. He will submit a report to, to internal management. It is not a public document. But one thing is clear. Myself is an external auditor. When I come for audit, my first question would be, do you have existence of internal control system? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have existence of internal audit department? Yes, sir. Who is the leading this department? Qualified CA. I can place some reliance on the work done by him. If non-CA, of course I can relay, but it's suspicious. Auditor work become easier if internal audit department is effective. I can depend on the work done by him. Of course, I have to take the responsibility. Absolutely, I won't depend. At least a test check I have to conduct. If I am satisfied, the work can be assessed and accepted. And internal auditor's report is given to management. It is not a public document. Now let us see. Because later part, you have to answer one question. What is the interface between internal auditor, external auditor? Interface means differences. What are the differences between internal auditor, external auditor? Internal audit or external audit? External means statutory. Right? By this time, easily you can answer 4 or 5 points. Let us see. The ICAI describes internal audit as an independent management function which involves continuous and critical appraisal of the functioning of the entity with a view to suggest improvements there to and added value strengthen the overall governance mechanism of the entity including Entity's Statistic Risk Management Control System. Internal audit therefore provides assurance that there is a transparency in reporting as a part of the good governance. Internal audit being an independent appraisal function assures the objectivity and consultation which enhances the value and improves the organizational operations. It not only includes matters related to the finance, but also critical appraisal of the policies and the procedures of the company. And internal audit is based on the principle of the early detection and prevention of the further damage. At the end of the year, if you detect any irregularity, you can't go back and correct it. Every month if you conduct internal audit, in the very first month I am able to detect my any errors or fraud is there and the next 11 months at least it can be prevented. That is, the points of, it points out irregularities, non-compliances and a timely, not after the year end in case of a statutory audit. This is about internal audit. Just meaning and we'll take up later. Point will come. Take it once. Are you clear there? It is the independent appraisal of the management. Hence voluntary. 
only for certain cases compulsory otherwise it is not compulsory it is essentially conducted only to know whether internal controls were effective or ineffective our internal rules and regulations are safeguarding our company's property or not is there any unauthorized access of the company's property timely detection of any irregularities within the entity so that corrective action can be taken immediately so that in future it won't repeat again and again i need not go and correct you need not wait for q1 q2 q3 to complete na every one month internal audit can be conducted then what is advantage every month audit is there speedy detection of any irregularities within the entity it works like a moral check on employees or internal audit is there external audit is there better not to involve any kind of activity right so in nutshell what could be the answer here it is not a compulsory directed by management internal auditors are appointed by management scope is defined by management and report is given to management and it is not a public document internal auditor need not be a qualified professional okay this is for the day we we'll see remaining next class tomorrow thank you guys